Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another PC how-to video for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm going to show you how to install the ever-popular Corsair H100i all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. Now, the one I have here, the H100i RGB Platinum SE, is actually somewhat of a rare model. This one is white, which is really cool, but again, very rare, and it's RGB. It uses actually the LL120 fan that I have here. But most of the RGB models that Corsair sells actually use an ML120 fan, and they actually have a few different versions of that. So I'll go over that briefly in this video, but I'll be focusing most of my time on how you mount it to an AMD AM4 platform. So the fan connection issue, well, yeah, it's going to depend on which H100i you have, and there are so many. I've actually tested, I think, four H100i models over the years. So the H100i just keeps kind of being reinvented by Corsair and that's probably because the H100i name is so well known. In fact, I think it's probably the best selling all-in-one cooler of all time. So I can understand why Corsair doesn't want to abandon H100i, but there are so many different models of that. So I'll try to illustrate the fan connection system for a few different models that are currently on the market. But again, I'll be focusing on the installation of the bracket on the AM4 platform. And I am creating a series of videos for AM4 users. I've done a few air coolers. I've done a couple liquid coolers. Now I'm moving on to H100i. And the idea here is to give you kind of a brief tutorial if you're new to PC building. Now I know a lot of my viewers are really familiar with mounting a CPU cooler, but not everyone is. And so, hey, if you already have this cooler and you haven't installed or you don't need help, cool. You can just press stop now and watch a different video, preferably on this channel. But hopefully you'll find this really helpful if you're new to PC building or you've never had an H100i and you're trying to get it going and can't quite figure out how to do it using the manual, which frankly I wouldn't blame you for because the manual is pretty cryptic. So without further ado, let's jump into the installation of this cooler. So first, I'm going to walk through the parts with you that you'll find in the box. Here's the radiator. This is actually a 360 millimeter model in black. I'll be installing a 240 millimeter in white. This is the cooling plate, and you can see it has thermal paste pre-applied. That's one of the nice things about using a Corsair cooler. You don't have to worry about that. And you also get those clips pre-attached for Intel. I'll show you how to take those off in a moment. Here are the two fans you'll be using for a 240. You'll get three of these for a 360. Here are all the mounting parts for AMD, and I'm going to show you how you switch over. Here's the radiator that I'm going to be installing. Here is the cooling block with the Intel mounts pre-applied. Okay, so if you have an Intel system, these are the ones you're going to want to use, but I got to get these off. And this is a little bit of kind of just a hard process. You just got to wrench it off with your hands. The first one comes off pretty easily because you have good leverage, but now I don't have such a good grip and I have to give this a couple of tries to get this off. Okay, so you just gotta pull on it while holding the block there, it kind of pulls off. And now I'm gonna put the AMD clips on. And these are the AMD clips. Note that they can be upside down or right side up, and you want that tall part sticking up away from the thermal plate, away from the CPU. Okay, so you see how I've installed that. And I'm gonna install one on the other side as well. They go in pretty easily. It's actually easier to put these in than it is to take them out, interestingly enough. So see, that kind of just goes in right there. So the next step will actually be to attach the screws and the small little loops that hook over the AMD bracket. So here are the four parts you'll need to fish out of the parts bag. You've got two thumb screws and then two metal loops. And I'll show you how to connect those now to your pump. See, you actually just get the little loops at the bottom and then attach the thumb screws at the top. You don't have to tighten them all the way down. In fact, you don't want to at this point. Just have them hang loosely like you see here in preparation for mounting on the motherboard. Now, my preference is always to attach the radiator first and then the pump. And the case I'm using has this really cool removable radiator tray. And I'm going to be using that here to show you how I attach the radiator outside of the case. You'll probably need to do it inside of your case, but I still recommend this step first. Now, of course, before we attach the radiator, we want to attach the fans, but you've got to keep in mind which way your radiator is going to be oriented in your case. I recommend top mounting your radiator and also keeping in mind which way you want the hoses to run. 
Typically, they should be facing the front of the case. One last thing is thinking about the wire leads on your fans. You want those to face the back side of the case so they're not sticking out right in front of your build. So you can see how I've oriented kind of behind the radiator. So you gotta think about where that radiator is gonna be sitting in your case. Now, if you're gonna front mount your radiator, the process is a little bit different because the screws used for the fans are also used to hold the radiator in place. So in between the fan and the radiator is actually the mounting system in the chassis. Now, in some ways that's simpler because you reduce the number of screws you need from 16 to eight, but it also makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to hold the radiator in place while you're attaching the fans inside your chassis. Here, I get to attach the fans very simply on my workbench. So at this point, I'll finish up the placement of the screws and then I'll fix them with a screwdriver. Next, I'll have a look at the fan connections. Here I'm using a standard non-RGB fan. So I just have the PWM connector. That's a four pin connector. You can actually connect it to your motherboard but if you want integrated controls through the IQ software that Corsair offers, you're gonna to wanna to connect it directly to the pump. So you can control both the pump and the fans together. Note that this has a few other cables connected to it and I will discuss those later in the installation process. Quick note for anyone installing one of the new Capellix models in the Hydro Series lineup, you'll have a breakout box included with your cooler that allows control over both the RPM and RGB of your fans. Here's the one in my 5000X chassis. The one included with the coolers is packaged a little bit differently, but it has the same overall effect. Now let's move on to the installation of the radiator. Of course, I do have this removable tray that you probably won't have with your case, but it does allow me to more easily illustrate how this actually works. First, you'll want to look at the mounting points. You'll see that the mounting points both for wider 280 millimeter coolers and then these narrower ones for 240 and 360 millimeter coolers. Of course, I'm illustrating the installation of a 240, so that means it's a narrower cooler. So I'll be using the narrower set of rails in my case, but I still have some decisions to make in terms of fore aft positioning. And I like to orient it so it's right above my motherboard rather than way out in front of the chassis or pushed all the way back to the rear of the chassis. So I'm just gonna estimate it here more or less sort of in the center, maybe biased a little bit towards the rear of the chassis is where I want this to be. So here are the screws included with the Corsair cooler. I'm gonna be using eight of them along with a washer. The washers are pretty important so that you don't damage the frame of your chassis. If you don't use the washer with the screw, it'll actually kind of bore through that frame there and can actually bend it, certainly scratch the paint. So just put that washer on to make sure you keep your chassis pristine and your radiator fully secured. So I'll go ahead and mount this through those eight screw holes. Now that the radiator is installed, you wanna double check whether or not it's spaced correctly in relation to your CPU. So is it too far out in front, in back? Is there enough reach for your hoses to get to the CPU socket? Here I do have enough space, but if I had the radiator all the way forward, it might actually be too far away. Now here's a quick look at the socket. We're gonna be using the AM4 socket. Note that of course you'll want the CPU in place before you put the cooler down and also you'll want these brackets in place. These come pre-attached to your motherboard. If they're not there, look for them in the box. They do not come with the cooler. Now let's move on to the installation of the cooling block here. First, a critical reminder, if you're using the new out-of-the-box Corsair cooler, the thermal paste is pre-applied. If you're using one that you've previously installed or you bought used, make sure you have replacement thermal paste here before you lock down your cooler onto the CPU. Remember, we already attached the clips with those little thumb screws. We attached them loosely before, so there should be enough play in them to loop over those hooks on the motherboard. If there's not, you'll have to loosen them a little bit. Now I'm doing this all by hand before getting my screwdriver out to make sure everything's in place so I can feel that with my hands here and then I get the screwdriver out to really ratchet it down. Okay, you don't wanna do this until you know it's absolutely in the right location on your socket. Note that these clips or ears will sort of bend and they'll look like they're deforming but that is actually by design. These are metal springs. So no, you're not actually damaging the cooler. You're not damaging any components. What you're actually doing is providing a sufficient amount of tension so that you get a really good transfer of heat between the CPU's heat spreader and the cooler's cold plate. And I recommend you tighten these down as far as they'll go. They'll stop when it's tight enough. And here we have it fully installed. I give it one last check with my hand and now it's time to attach those cables I mentioned earlier. This is a SATA power cable that powers all the lighting in the pump 
And this is the tachometer cable that allows you to monitor the tachometer of your pump. So do attach that to your motherboard. Here, I'm gonna be using the AIO header on my motherboard. You can really attach it to any header depending on the motherboard you'll be using. The SATA power cable, on the other hand, doesn't attach to the motherboard. It actually needs to be looped back behind your motherboard and over to your power supply, which I'll do off camera. And now move on to the last cable required for a Corsair cooler installation. It's the USB cable. It uses a micro USB connector and then a standard USB 2.0 connector. Now, of course, you do need to attach it to the pump. It does not come pre-attached out of the box. So you'll need to find the hole on the left side of the pump kind of in line with the Corsair logo. And then I will loop that USB cable all the way back behind the motherboard and then connect it to an available USB 2.0 header, likely at the bottom of the board. And what that USB cable allows you to do is tap into the powerful IQ software suite. So this is something that's unique to Corsair and it really is pretty impressive. It allows you to customize your fan, your pump, and your lighting all in one place. Corsair provides a number of presets that you can apply to your fan and pump. So you've got quiet, balanced, and extreme for the pump, which roughly corresponds to 2,000, 2,400, and 3,000 RPM. 3,000 RPM being pretty loud. So the extreme pump setting is really only useful when you're under load. Corsair also recently added a fourth preset for fans, which is zero RPM. Perfect if you want your system to be totally silent at idle. Just remember to bump that up to one of the other presets when you go under load. Now, even better though, is the custom fan profile that you can set up in IQ, which means you could set your fans to be very quiet all the way up until you hit a load and then you just jump those up to whatever RPM you want them to be. Note that the IQ software suite ties into the coolant temperature. So you see that here, it's not the same as your CPU temp, so you kind of have to reorient yourself or alternatively just change the sensor setting from the cooler to the CPU. By default, it will be the cooler. Now, all of this gets a whole lot more fun when it comes to lighting because you can sync all your Corsair gear. So here I am actually syncing some Corsair RAM. And of course I can set the RAM independently to do its own light show, but if I use the lighting link option, it will sync up with all the Corsair gear in the system, including my cooler and an Asus motherboard. So Corsair does allow you to actually control Asus branded motherboards through IQ, another really cool perk of the software. And here is the cooler installed, looking great alongside some Corsair Vengeance SL RAM, all controlled via the IQ software. Now, if you have any questions, post them down below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.